The season one cliffhanger of House of the Dragon aired about two months ago, and it still sits in our heads rent free. This is crazy given how much important information was crammed into that one season. We couldn't have been more excited to see all these brand new behind the scenes pictures of the Game of Thrones prequel based on George R.R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood. Stay tuned as we go through all of them. Firstly, new House of the Dragon behind the scenes images. The first season of the Game of Thrones precursor was an emotional roller coaster that abruptly ended late last year. Let's face it, the cast and crew deserves every bit of the praise that's been directed their way for the show's casting, costumes, and general mood. They had a ton of fun while working extremely hard to make the entire series successful. So let's have a look at some of the recently released production stills that shed light on how some of the legendary scenes were created. Starting with Rhaenyra is growing up. This set picture shows just how much we don't see behind the camera. Millie Alcock did a wonderful job as the younger version of Rhaenyra, and she really set up the character for us as a tough and intelligent Targaryen. Here she sits on a horse and is talking to Sir Kristen Cole casually. It probably comes as a surprise to everyone that the horses weren't CGI since half the entire show seems to run on it. Up next, Damon takes on the Triarchy. As Damon shows us all how valuable he is in the fight against the Triarchy, this will likely go down as one of the finest scenes in Game of Thrones history. Lys, Myr, and Tyrosh, three of the Free Cities, have joined forces to form the Triarchy. As a result of the Free Cities on Essos's western coast occasionally being referred to as the Daughters of Old Valyria. It is also known as the Kingdom of the Three Daughters. In this exclusive behind-the-scenes pic, you can see Damon dressed up in full battle armor and about to charge ahead. The director seems to be giving him a rundown on how to look more fearsome than he already does. But don't worry, Miguel Sapochnik, Damon has it covered. Coming up, Rhea Royce and her tragic accident. The episode of House of the Dragons, We Light the Way, began violently, despite the fact that everyone is talking about the gory wedding. Damon Targaryen returns to the Vale after being exiled from King's Landing by his brother, King Viserys I. He runs across his ex-wife, Rhea Royce, as he makes his way home. She leads over their ancestral realm, Runestone, and is known as the Lady of the House Royce. Damon has already said that his wife bores him and that he has no interest in her, and this moment simply shows how badly he wanted her gone. He sneaks into her homeland and just cracks her skull open with a big rock. Although it was a gruesome scene, it seems like the actual filming was much more fun. Matt Smith looks like he's cracking a slight smile while crushing his wife's skull. Good to know he at least had a sense of humor about it. Following, Lena's historic but painful painful death. HBO faithfully recreates Lena's existence as it appears in Fire and Blood. However, her terrible death represents the character transformation that is the most important. Lena goes into labor while touring Essos in Pentos in the sixth episode of House of the Dragon. She tries her hardest to give birth to the kid she and Damon are expecting, but the attending surgeon suggests to Damon that performing a cesarean section would be the only chance to rescue the kid. But she obviously won't survive the process, so Damon considers taking matters into his own hands. Before he can do that, Lena Lena runs to Vagar's resting place on the Pentos coast and calls out to Vagar and begs him to burn her alive. As Damon looks on in horror, Vagar finally carries out his rider's request and burns his rider alive. The on-set picture looks just as painful to watch as the real scene as Lena stumbles on the muddy ground to her fate. More on Everyone Hates King Aegon. We didn't expect to become completely smitten with an actor who appeared in only two episodes by the end of the season, yet here we are. Tom Glyn Carney gives a fantastic performance despite having little on-screen time. A horribly one-note character that leans significantly towards the easily hateable villain trope, and he had the potential to actually be remembered worse than Joffrey Baratheon. While we do not support Aegon's assault on the young maid, Glenn Carney successfully moves past his weak and underdeveloped starting position in his quest for depth. He provides Aegon with the complexity that makes him a layered character and actually draws sympathy from the viewer. In season one, the coronation of Aegon is crucial. The emotional transitions between Aegon's vigorous opposition to the throne and complete acceptance are fascinating, and it's not just a great moment for Aegon as a character, it also helps the dance get started. This behind-the-scenes sneak peek shows Aegon shakily walking up to his throne. If you couldn't tell, the extras on set are actually edited and multiplied in number, so actually, only the first row is standing there. How Glen Carney controlled his laughter, walking in an empty room like that, we don't know. Maybe that's why he gets paid the big bucks instead of us. In other news, Claire Foy couldn't stand Matt Smith in House of the Dragon. Claire Foy, Matt Smith's co-star from The Crown, admitted that she didn't enjoy watching him in House of the Dragon. The Crown on Netflix features Queen Elizabeth in season 1-2. Foy got the chance to work closely with her co-star, Matt Smith, who portrays the Queen's husband, Prince Philip, on the show, and got to know his acting approach. But she might not have been ready for his portrayal of a more shocking character than the Duke of Edinburgh. He acted as a teenage Prince Philip and was conceited, cocky, and even kind of menacing. These characteristics are actually what drew comparisons to Prince Daemon Targaryen, since they're very similar. Yeah, you heard us right. Prince Daemon Targaryen and Prince Philip share more than a few traits. 
traits. In fact, Smith's portrayal of Prince Philip was one of the factors in his eventual casting as the rebellious prince, according to the showrunner of the HBO series, Ryan Condal. Damon's activities, however, were obviously much more concerning than Philip's. Following his deeply disturbing path became an almost impossible experience for Claire Foy. Next, Claire Foy talks on why she couldn't keep watching. She revealed to Josh Horowitz during a podcast interview that watching the entire first season required a tremendous level of dedication, which she ended up losing by the end of the show. Foy's concern with Damon is actually quite understandable. Prince Damon Targaryen is a complex person who is capable of doing some pretty vile things, despite becoming the ultimate internet boyfriend. He randomly kills a number of peasants in the first episode, and things only grow weirder from there. To gain access to the Iron Throne through succession, he seduces his teenage niece and shatters his ex-wife's skull with a stone. These are only two of Damon's worst deeds, and it only just kicks off from there. Although she was a devoted friend to the king's consort, Claire Foy said that she would always end up arguing with him in the scenes. She ended up confessing to Smith that she found him repulsive to watch. She conveniently left out what Smith's response was. But her argument makes sense. Damon's actions can be really hard to understand. But still, fans seem to appreciate every minute of it, which shows that Matt Smith did a terrific job portraying such a nuanced character. It took a lot of ability and effort on the actress' part to perform all Damon did and yet win over the fans. Moving on, House of the Dragon wins at the Golden Globes. Just now, House of the Dragon accomplished a feat that even the original Game of Thrones could not. The HBO prequel won the Golden Globe for Best Drama Series. Miguel Sapochnik, the show's executive producer and co-showrunner, as well as Emma Darcy and Millie Alcock, who were both nominated for this year's Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Drama Series, were present to accept the honor for the show's debut season. Sapochnik thanked HBO for trusting them with their priceless golden goose and hoped they had all followed in the footsteps of the original show as best they could. Throughout its eight-season run, Game of Thrones won numerous awards, including four Emmys for Outstanding Drama Series, but it didn't fare as well at the Golden Globes, despite being given five nominations. Peter Dinklage did take home the award for Best Supporting Actor in 2012. Finally, Matt Smith's amazing performance deserves praise and pockets. Without everything being of the highest caliber, a show like Game of Thrones would not have been awarded the status it has. The show did a really good job with the costumes, for instance. The fact that its planned prequel, House of the Dragon, will include some of the best TV costumes ever shouldn't come as a surprise. Matt Smith, the star of House of the Dragons, is a huge lover of the artwork and couldn't stop praising the costume designers for their highly intricate and wonderful work. But he did have a tiny problem with his royal attire, so much so that he nearly fought with the costume designers to include it. Jenny Tamim, the costume designer for House of the Dragon, discussed his creative process in an interview with Motion Pictures. She said that he came in and had an entire argument asking for pockets. He said that he didn't know what to do with his hands if he didn't have any pockets in his costume, and Tamim said that he was supposed to just grip his sword, a move he's kind of become famous for now. Thanks, Tamim. If he had started using his pockets, then he would have looked like some ordinary dude, and not like he's from the 10th century or something. But he pulled it off amazingly, and always looked classy and menacing. Though, he definitely deserves pockets for the next season. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the behind-the-scenes images, and what was one of your favorites? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next one.